aspect ratios, something I'm passionate about on Australian television. That's right, it's time for another tedious explanation. Television began broadcasting in Australia in 1956, just in time for the Melbourne Olympics. One of the benefits of being some 20 years late to the TV party was we got the superior System B standard right from the start. Unlike System A, used by the United Kingdom and which only displayed 405 horizontal lines, System B broadcast 625 lines at 25 frames a second with a standardised aspect ratio of 4x3. Aside from the introduction of PAL format colour in 1975, this is what TV looked like until the 1st of January 2001, when Australian television went completely f***ing insane. And why was that? Because that's when TV went digital. Digital TV has a number of advantages. Not only is there better picture and sound quality, but there's the addition of electronic program guides and the transmissions take up less bandwidth, so you can have more channels. And they're all in widescreen with an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 which is great because basically you can see more stuff on the screen. Compare this 4x3 clip of GoldenEye I taped back in 1999 with the widescreen version on DVD. You any idea how long the winter lasts in this country? Huh? Tell him, Dimitri! Uh, well, it depends. Silence! Tell him, Dimitri! Uh, well, it depends. Silence! So widescreen is clearly better. So what was the problem? Well, back in 2001, digital TVs were expensive very expensive, and it would still be another five to ten years before they offered any proper extra channels. So it wasn't like everyone was just going to throw out their perfectly fine analog TV and spend thousands of dollars on a new digital one just so they can see what Dimitri looks like. Well, it depends. Silence! Hence, there was a transition period where TV was broadcast both digitally and analogly, with regular reminders that digital TV was a thing. And this led to some interesting quirks, particularly with commercials, because up until now, advertisers just gave the TV stations their ad in 4x3. But suddenly, they had a dilemma. They couldn't make two different versions of their ad, one widescreen and one normal. The one master version had to work in both aspect ratios. At first, most advertisers took the easy option and stuck with 4x3 and just put up with their ad airing on the digital channel with black bars on the left and right or pillar boxed, as they say in the biz. Not to be confused with letter boxed, which is when a 16x9 video is displayed in 4x3 with black bars at the top and bottom. As time went on, more and more ads and programs, particularly movies, were displayed in this way on the analog channel, and full frame 4x3 content became the rare exception to the norm. But for a while there, aspect ratios on both broadcasts were all over the place often switching back and forth multiple times during a commercial break. This was done at the TV station by a piece of hardware called an Aspect Ratio Converter, or ARC, which would automatically adjust the aspect ratio for each ad just prior to transmission. Most of the time, it worked flawlessly, but occasionally you'd see one of these transitions go to air. 8.30 here on 7. Her smile is his obsession. Did you see that? Blink and you miss it. Here it is again a little slower. That's the ARC switching over one frame too early. This is from a tape from 2003 and that particular tape is full of those little glitches. The TV stations did iron out those bugs eventually. Even still, every now and then you'd get something like this. Hi, I'm Gary Toomey of Ansett Australia. This 2001 ad for Ansett looks like it's supposed to be in 16 by 9 but it's been squished into 4 by 3. I haven't adjusted this, this is exactly how it aired. It is possible old mate Gary just wanted to appear thinner. It's jarring at first, but weirdly, the longer you watch it, the more normal it looks. That may also explain why so many people I knew in the mid-2000s were unknowingly watching the analog channels on their new widescreen TVs, so the 4x3 images were stretched out to 16x9. Mike Munro is not supposed to look like that. By the way, if ever you're unsure you're watching something in the correct aspect ratio, Look at people's faces. Graphics and text and cartoon characters usually look perfectly fine either way, but real people in the wrong aspect ratio never look quite right. As for this tape of Top Gear from 2011, it's 4x3, but the entire recording is letterboxed, including every ad. So if you watch it on a widescreen, it's surrounded by black bars on all sides, which is a bit irritating. Hopefully the TV you watch this on has a zoom function. 
Also, ever wondered why TV stations used to put their watermark or bug here and not right in the corner like they do today? It's because some folks insisted on keeping their old analog TVs and begrudgingly bought a digital set top box, which could adjust the 16 by nine broadcast to better fit the old four by three screens, effectively cutting off the sides and placing the logo right in the corner. Eventually though, the TV station said, eh, if they haven't upgraded by now, f them. And analog television finally ceased transmission around Australia in 2013. Now all Aussie TV is 16 by nine, unless the news is showing a viral video of someone yelling at a fast food worker that's been recorded on a phone in portrait mode. Look at all that wasted space. By the way, if ever you're in that situation, for the love of God, turn your phone on the side and shoot in landscape, please. You'll save a lot of editors a lot of trouble. As for 4x3, it's now a boutique aspect ratio used only for stylistic reasons. Like the show you're watching right now, VHS Review. I'm David M. Green. Thank you to John Hananowicz for that animation and also to Gavin Baskerville and James Patterson from the Australian Television Archive for answering my tedious questions about aspect ratios. And thanks to the supporters on Patreon for making it all possible.